We are days away from the midterm election, and in many races, who will win is anyone's guess. At the top of the ballot in the race for governor, the three latest polls remain within the margin of error, with the Real Clear Politics average giving Richard Cordray a slight lead over Mike DeWine. With the margin so narrow, it comes down to turnout, and both candidates are bringing out the big names in their parties to fire up their supporters. Vice President Mike Pence was in Mansfield for DeWine, and Senator Elizabeth Warren was at OSU for Cordray, and both have different views about how things are going. 4.2 million new jobs created in the last two years, and more than half a million right here in the Buckeye State. African-American and Latino unemployment has never been this low, and overall unemployment is at a 50-year low. This is a Republican Party that says, yeah, we're going to work on building a future. We're going to make a government that works for a thinner and thinner slice at the top. And everybody else, you're just on your own. And for sure, you know what would have been more fun is if... Mike Pence was at OSU, and Elizabeth Warren went to Mansfield. <laughs> yeah. But it didn't happen. Friendly territory. <laughs> Wishful uh, thinking. Uh, you know, appreciative crowds. What's going on there? Is this all just firing up the base together? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and um, you know, I mean, the statistics are, are clear that the more higher turnout in general, the, the better Democrats do. So overall turnout signals usually that the Democrats are going to do better. Um, they're going to go to their bases at this point. It really is just a matter of turnout. Uh, we've already seen, um, you know, some a little bit of record breaking when it comes to the early balloting. So uh, I can't imagine Tuesday and everybody that that is um, uh, voting early. That you know, I keep getting. I don't know if you guys do get photos from uh, the voting, the, the early voting places. They're, they're packed. Yeah, Daryl, Elizabeth Warren and Richard Cordray kind of joined at the hip. Professionally, she created the agency, basically, that he ran, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. But she has not been very visible in this campaign. She showed up once during the primary, and, right. and now she's back at the, the last minute. And she's done fundraising uh, behind the scenes uh, for Rich Cordray, as have many of the, the senators that perhaps are viewed but in some quarters as a little too liberal for Ohio. Uh, Rich Cordray wants to be viewed as more of a centrist Democrat. Uh, and in many you know, issue positions, he, he truly is. So it's, a, it's, it's interesting. Both sides are trying to walk that line. You know, Cordray doesn't want to be perceived as too far to the left. And you got Mike DeWine with Donald Trump coming in. This is going to be an interesting balancing act. Doesn't want to be too Trump-like. He'll take their supporters, but, you know, I don't know if there's going to be like a full embrace when he's in Cleveland on Monday or not. Now, Bob, when he was in Cincinnati, the president was in Cincinnati yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Mike DeWine had to leave early. Yeah. He had a scheduling conflict. Yeah. Will he be leaving early for Cleveland? <laughs> I don't think he will be. <laughs> He'll be up and, on stage with him? Yeah, and I, and I think we saw with the special election, the congressional election in the summer, that um, the president coming in helps a lot in that it gets our our voters to come out. Um, that special, I don't think Tory Balderson would have won, uh, you know, w without the president coming in. So I think it was smart of him to bring him in here at the last minute. John Kasich holding a rally Friday night with Mike DeWine. They've been kind of, they haven't really campaigned together at all. Does that help Mike DeWine in the suburbs where folks who are like, who like John Kasich but not Donald Trump? I don't think it matters. I think Mike DeWine's the de facto incumbent in this race because John Kasich can't run again. This is a change election. And if you are undecided at this point and you look at Mike DeWine, you don't see change. He has, as attorney general, fought to take away voting rights, gay rights, women's rights, we live in America where we give people new rights. We don't take them away. And health care is the dominant issue. And his first order of business as attorney general was to try to kill the Affordable Care Act. But with the economy doing so well, do Ohioans want change? You heard Mike Pence. Those are pretty accurate numbers about the unemployment rate. I, 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 pretty well. I think if, if Mike DeWine started out with such a fundraising advantage, name ID advantage, and a pretty comfortable margin, if people liked him, we wouldn't see Rich Cordray have erased that and turned that into a lead for him. Well, I think the Democrats, uh, the problem with Cordray is they picked the wrong candidate. I think the Democrats would have been much better off in this kind of an environment if they had gone with one of the three women candidates. But they pushed all of them aside and said, no, 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 Rich Cordray should be in line. Unfortunately, 
there is no, especially when you're looking at the two, Mike DeWine and Rich Cordray, there's no, personality-wise, not a lot of difference there, no stark contrast. Uh, relying too much on the economy in this race is a little bit different because I think where a lot of people are feeling it in their pocketbooks now is with health care. And so, you know, Mike Pence can push that, but I think, uh, you know, lots of polls have been showing that people are worried about health care costs. The economy's rolling along, and it has been for a few years. Daryl, to Bob's point, Richard Cordray has a new ad out. It's not him. It's Betty Sutton. She's in front. She's saying that Richard Cordray and her, and her are going to protect health care. Is that part of the trying to, uh, to again, aimed at suburban women voters? Um, I, I would think so. I think that's a reasonable conjecture um, to get her out. And, you know, I've seen her out on the campaign trail. Now, she, now she can stand up in front of a mostly male union crowd and do it pretty well as well. You know, she's a... She's good she's, on the hospital. Yeah, and, you know, she has union roots, or, or roots, as they say, in parts of Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but one thing, guys, we can't, we can't fall for. I mean, two years ago, I kept hearing, Hillary Clinton's going to get all those suburban women voters, and she's going to win in states like Ohio and That was before Donald Trump. Uh, well, they keep relying on this happening, and it hasn't been happening. Has thing, have things changed? Well, it's in only two the years. second set of elections. Right. <laughs> the first yeah. I, I think they have changed, and I think one of the things we've seen change is the Democrats no longer put their thumb on the scale and decided who the nominee was going to be. Early polling showed Rich and Betty were tied. And I think Betty's tired of losing, and she looked at that, and she said, I'm kick, killing it in northern Ohio. He's killing it in southern Ohio. And those two made a decision to team up because the Democrats are tired of losing. How much Mike DeWine loaned his campaign, Daryl, $3 million? Most of it we hear is going to TV these last days. Sure. Does that have a, a factor this late? Oh, absolutely, day? absolutely. Um, Gee, Bob will tell you, it has a big factor in, in certain <laughs> yeah, quarters, really big. And, yeah, it's a total of $4 million. I mean, that, even in a, a state like Ohio, that, does, that gets you a lot of rating points statewide. And, you know, and changed he's, many minds. Well, you know. As close the, as this is, you don't have to change that many minds. That's and the that's thing. why the money's important now, because you're down to just a few. What is the undecided right now? It's about 10, 10 percentage. We're seeing 15, 15, 15 oh, 17 I thought it narrowed a bit. Yeah, or some polls have it not. That, that's part of the problem here as far as reliable public polls. There's just not been a whole lot yeah. in yeah. this race. So we're a little bit in the dark, and, you know, we hear, and, you know, one side wants to leak us their, their set of numbers, and the other side wants to leak us their set of numbers, and, you know, we have whole shakers of salt that we have to take <laughs> with all those. Uh, but, yeah, I think, I think the analysis is, is totally right. I mean, the 538.com has Ohio's governor's race as the second most competitive in the nation next to Georgia. Wow. We had one poll that had Mark DeWine running for governor. Yeah. I That's saw right. that. And, and <laughs> Travis Irvine was renamed something else in another poll. Yeah. Thomas, well, it was I a think. GOP oh, yeah. polling firm that got their candidate's name wrong. But anyway, Mark, Mike, four letters, it begins with them. It's all right. Yeah.